Thank you. Hello. Now for something completely different. Let's first try something. <laughs> nice. Let's see what do we have here. Okay, cool. Maybe we can try. That works a bit, okay, nice. So as you can probably assume or see, I did not now communicate with a real uh, computer. So what did I talk with to right now? Well, uh, first uh, let me introduce this uh, topic. My name is Moris and I would like to present to you uh, Shell LM which is part of my uh, master's thesis, which I did with my supervisors and uh, colleagues at Stratosphere Research Lab. So this is going to be more a uh, security-oriented talk, So because I know people are from different backgrounds. Here I would firstly like to do a just brief uh, background uh, catch-up so that we're all on the same page and that we can all understand what we did here and why did we do it. Yeah. So basically, uh, two concepts that I'd like to cover at the beginning from the title are honeypots and uh, large language models. So let's see honeypots. What are they? Why do we need them? Honeypot, basically, it's a trap. It's a system designed to be attacked. Uh, uh, those are systems that we try to get them to emulate real systems as realistically as possible in order, and we hope, that the attackers will attack them. But why? Well, if the attackers attack those systems, we can track them, we can track their actions, we know who is in our system, what are they doing, when were they there, and we can discover new attacks, new exploits, new strategies, and also, hopefully, the attackers will spend their time busy with our fake system, Honeypot, and not interacting with our real system, and that way we can protect our data. Okay, so that's briefly about Honeypots. Large language models. Not to go into technical definitions because they are boring and too long, I will say just one thing, ChatGPT, we all use it, I assume, hopefully for good, not for bad things. Uh, so what are, they, what are they good for? They help us with uh, recognition, translation, prediction, text generation, etc. And these uh, bolded items here are what was really useful for us in this research. Another thing I'd like to mention here while we're talking about uh, LLMs, is two concepts I'm going to mention also later, which are uh, temperature and token number, because basically the response of our model depends on these things. Temperature is basically a probability of the model giving us a most likely response or some response that is less likely. So the higher the temperature, the model is more likely to give us some gibberish or something. Token number that uh, influences the size of the response. So if we want some nice detailed responses, we should have some nice token number for model to be able to generate well. Okay, so motivation. Why would we want to use LLMs to create honeypots since we already have methods for honeypot creations for years and years? <laughs> In so far, uh, standard methods of honeypot creation usually take a long time. Let's say we want to simulate a Linux computer or some IoT device that runs Linux. We need to create all the files, directories, users, bunch of stuff ourselves. And we're going to do all of that, which is a lot of work, and then we're going to forget something. The attacker's going to come in, they're going to try to see uh, the connected devices, they're going to get nothing, and yeah, it's obviously a fake system. No need for me to stay here. Goodbye. And we get no data. And yeah, they can be then easily detectable. The other reason why we did this like a Linux honeypot was because 
a lot of devices use Linux. Network devices, servers, IoT devices, desktop computers, etc. So we said, okay, what if LLMs generate it all? And I mean all, users, directories, files, devices. Basically, as you get user input, you get response that's completely made up by the LLM, but looks realistic. Okay, Is, would that be more believable, more engaging, more interesting to the attackers or automated bots that attack our systems? And also, would it maybe be easier for the security developers to deploy those systems? So, yeah, we said, let's make Linux. What do we need to make Linux today? Well, probably not the same things as people needed in the 90s. Uh, as the title of the presentation says, we need a language model. Uh, here we used a GPT 3.5 Turbo 16K. 16K is that number of tokens, which is a model by OpenAI. We gave our model temperature of zero because we didn't want any um, too weird answers because we need to simulate a realistic system. We need it to be as real as possible. And we gave it 800 tokens for generation per user input because we wanted some nice detailed answers, some nice uh, file contents, directories, etc. And that now opened uh, this new area that emerged with um, language models, which is prompt engineering because basically we need to instruct our model to behave like a Linux. So yes, you can start with a simple prompt. Okay, you're now Linux terminal. You should respond to every user input just as Linux terminal. And that's nice, but it's uh, kind of too simple. Okay, you're gonna do LS, you're gonna get something nice, but if you try any bigger command or just the format of the output, won't be nice, or, the, or even the model will start to explain to you why it's giving you the output it's giving. So we don't want that. We want it to just do what Linux would do, Linux terminal. So there's this thing called uh, chain of thought reasoning or step-by-step -step reasoning where we instruct model by some examples and literally step-by-step -step what to do. For example, when you get user input, first check if it's a valid Linux command. I mean, uh, GPT is trained on vast amounts of data. It has a huge knowledge of especially Linux and Linux commands. So this shouldn't be a problem. If it's not, make sure you respond with a valid Linux error message. Or before you respond to a valid command, check if you responded to it before. And make sure that your uh, output is consistent with what you gave the user before. So that way, step by step, we explain the model, what we expect from it, and how it should behave. And yeah, also they were in that prompt given a few of examples and the uh, most important stuff were, was repeated. Other necessary ingredients uh, for this is, uh, of course, Python script, which we use that runs all of it. Uh, not just, okay, it handles models, some edge cases, uh, certain output things because, for instance, ping, you want it to print line by line. You don't want it uh, in a chunk. Uh, also logging because we need to monitor everything that's happening in our system. Uh, so we need to have all the commands and outputs. And yeah, it's nice to have a server where you can deploy it so people could play with it, test it. Uh, and yeah, of course, a little bit of money, but <laughs> that's for everything. And yeah, when you deploy your uh, honeypot, you can then SSH to it. Of course, we are just making the model. We are not using LLM to make the server. We just uh, deploy our model onto a server. So I have a short demo here. I showed a few commands at the beginning, but here I, I think you can see more basically what uh, I should have make it, maybe done a bigger font, but Basically, you can uh, create files, write into files, uh, remove files. Um, you can try uh, some network commands, check for uh, devices, try some gibberish, see how it will respond, or some commands that don't make sense. Uh, you can check the users in your system. 
basically this is all uh, LLM generated output uh, even these uh, this string here uh, you can check the version of operating system basically <laughs> w get curl whatever so um of course, this is all looks nice, but you know, to for us to make sure that people actually can get confused by this, we needed to run a few experiments, and so I'm gonna explain that a little bit. We had um, 12 uh, participants and a few security experts uh, in our experiment, and uh, the important thing here because this was the first experiment uh, we did, I'll talk about this more later, is that we told users they knew they are in a honeypot. And in, in an LLM honeypot, what we needed them to do is based on the output they get, for instance, they try LS, they get some listing, and they have to say, based on this output I get, I can say this, that this response is obvious, uh, is a, looks like a real Linux terminal. I would expect this on my computer now. Or there's no way any Linux terminal would ever print something like this. And we, of course, logged everything. But, and we also needed uh, explanations why they think th it's a correct output or why they think that there's no way a terminal would ever print it. And then we had our experts take those logs and take those user responses and uh, cross-reference them and to say, yeah, based on this user is right, there, this looks like a valid Linux output and that would be uh, true negative because uh, positive for us was if the users flagged the system as, or the output as a honeypot generated. Uh, so we had some, uh, also if the user said, okay, there is no way that this is a real output, but experts said uh, this is based on the explanation of the user and what we have in our logs, this could be output of the Linux system because, for instance, uh, some IoT devices have maybe smaller directories in some cases and things like that. And our users had um, varying expertise of uh, like security expertise they all knew very well linux but some were more uh, trained in security some less so some false positives were maybe due to people knowing they are in a honeypot or because they didn't have some specific security knowledge and so what were the results at the end okay it's uh, possible to use this for honeypot generation in total, over 200 commands. Each user tested over like 20, 25 commands were run. We had 12 participant and 12 participants, and in 83% of the cases, the output was indistinguishable from the real Linux terminal. What you would get. Uh, since this experiment was run, we, thanks to it, and due to developing this further, managed to fix some issues and bugs we encountered during experiments. So my assumption is that this number would probably be even higher now. Uh, some issues that you can encounter dealing with this are is the latency, as you might have noticed, um, especially at the beginning of the presentation. That doesn't necessarily have to be a problem because for those who know, like IoT devices are sometimes a bit less responsive, they take longer time, or it could be some distant server in a jungle somewhere, or IoT device in a jungle or something. But yeah, it's definitely something uh, due to the um, uh, technology we're, we're dealing with, which are the language models. Uh, of course, there are hallucinations and uh, forgetfulness, though uh, we didn't have too much problem with hallucinations here. The forgetfulness of the model is when its working memory uh, sometimes gets too big, it tends to forget certain things it did very early on, but it's definitely something we're working on now and uh, we're finding some solutions. So, uh, conclusions, yeah, LLMs show 
great potential. There's, of course, still a lot of work to be done here. But it's, a, I think, good first step and uh, for a proof of concept uh, was a nice research. Um, we plan to do more testing and experiments with people like A-B testing, not knowing they are in a honeypot. Also testing our method with some other methods like cowrie or something to check if bots or human attackers would stay longer in our honeypots or the, these other honeypots. And of course, the, this was a honeypot you could SSH to, but what about MySQL, HTTP, POP3, other protocols, or this was a Linux honeypot, what about, okay, Linux conference, no Windows, so something else, but you, you get a point, a very broad area and very interesting. So thank you for your attention. Yeah, yeah, if you want to try it and play with it, this is the, how you can SSH to it, this is a password. I also have uh, like papers with this information. If you don't have a chance to take a photo, please ask me, I will give you a few cards. And yeah, I'm, thank you again. And now the, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I expect there will be many questions. So let's start. Hello, great job, this, this is great. Uh, but uh, uh, one of the first steps the attacker typically does uh, is he tries to, or she, uh, download a payload and execute it. Obviously, you do not want this to execute the code, but uh, can it download the code and display it? Yes, I mean, uh, People tried things like curl wget. It, I mean, it creates a file. It, it creates and then HTML file you can read. So yes, you can do it. We've even like done to, um, to forbid people to execute stuff. It basically requires uh, root privileges. If you try to somehow escalate it, you get banned from the system. So we've handled it that way so far. Uh, hi, thanks for the great presentation. Uh, you said that you had quite a high success rate, uh, like uh, to the believability of the honeypot, uh, and you also mentioned the great latencies that there are somewhere sometimes. Um, was uh, was this somehow? Um, where the people uh, like uh, in the research? Where the people instructed like uh, to take the latency also into account when to, when determining how realistic it feels? Uh, basically, in the, uh, if you're referring to the experiment, we wanted people just based on the output uh, that generated. Just, yeah. To, yeah, just the output. Uh, yeah, if it's like looks like the output that you would get from your. Uh, system or when you SSH somewhere because it was pretty obvious that there is some latency and yes it would like raise suspicion yeah. in some people but yeah we were just testing how realistically it outputs the or respond responds to the prompts or inputs by the user yeah i see thank you very much yeah, thank you Thank you. Um, so I don't have background in security, but um, so let's say that the attacker gets caught in this trap, okay? What are you expecting? What, what would you do then? Like, does the, the model also collect the data about the attacker? Does it get its IP and then maybe launches some reverse even attack and get something into their computers? What's the potential of this? Yeah. Uh, Current, uh, so first, yeah, as I mentioned, we are logging everything. Everything is being, uh, all, all the commands by the attacker and all the responses by the model, we are saving them in our, our files. And also we, we can even track live every time somebody logs on, onto this port or something, what's happening. But yes, uh, all the interaction is saved to be analyzed later. Currently, we didn't weaponize it. We are not uh, launching any counterattacks, though we've been <laughs> discussing it. But that's another now research and experiment to see what can we do, like on the attack side with this. But yeah, good question. Thank you. 
Hi, thank you for your talk. Um, you showed in the uh, YouTube video some bash example how Turing complete is this language model. So you you showed in the in the in the video some bash example from some uh, for loop how Turing complete actually. So how how much processing power is there for these commands? Could I write in bash something like my exploit directly? Not sure. Uh, yeah, can you repeat the question, please? You were able to run bash commands. Yes. Right. What can this shell all do in bash? Bash is a scripting language. It's Turing complete, right? You can write anything in it. What can it do and what can't? Well, hmm. I'm not sure what it can't do. It's uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> sorry. All right. So, do we have any? Okay. If this example honeypot is exposed to the internet, uh, is there any real life case that uh, someone not part of the experiment uh, did get in and try to do some stuff? Did you call him or? Uh, like beside the experiment, did anyone? Yeah, anyone, anyone who knows basically where it is, but did you? Uh, 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 what I mean is, it's exposed. Uh, we know the password so we can log in. Uh, did you have any breach from somebody who is not part of the experiment, did not have a rights to uh, know about the SSH, SSH credentials, and they did get in and tried to do uh, some stuff? So far, we didn't have anyone like who didn't know about the experiments and this to breach in. Um, mostly, like we had people testing it during the experiment, and then while we were visiting some conferences, we had like we were talking to people, and then they were, t but. Every time someone was in it, we knew uh, about them. There was no like real attacker uh, reaching. Uh, first of all, great stuff. Um, how do you simulate commands like ping, where you don't get all of the output at once? Uh, where, where I don't get uh, like commands like ping, where you get only like. You, you get the outputs um, all at once. Yeah, you don't get it all at okay. once. Yeah, that's basically what's the handled in Python script. Like for ping, it catches if the ping command was issued, it catches the response, and then the Python sp script handles the printing uh, line by line, basically, and for some other similar commands. So that, that's what the model can't do, what we need to do by hand. All right, so any other question? Well, if not, thank you once again. Thank you.